Today, I'm going to present our paper, Swap Advisor. Deep Neural Network, or DNN, has been the most popular research area in the recent years. Compared to the first well-known DNN model AlexNet proposed in 2012, the model now becomes much larger. For example, the state-of-the-art vision model Neural Architecture Search Network requires around 10 GB, while AlexNet requires only 0.8 GB. It's 13 times more memory requirement. Unfortunately, the GPU memory growth rate is slower than what we would like. Between 2012 to 2019, the GPU memory only grows four times. Some proposed models like Y-ResNet do not fit on a single GPU. How are we going to train even larger models with the limited GPU memory? Since most neural networks are executed layer by layer, we can put a required tensor to the GPU memory and execute the current layer. After the execution, we move to the next layer. Those temporarily unused tensor can then be offloaded to the CPU memory to release the GPU memory. We call this technique swapping. Swap advisor utilizes swapping to support large DNN model. Before diving into the detail of swap advisor, we need to first understand what does a general deep learning program look like. Typically, a neural network is represented by a combination of tensor and tensor operators. For example, the combination of this neural network can be represented by two tensors. People use the API provided by a deep learning system to describe how does a neural network look like in terms of tensors. There are several popular deep learning systems we use a MaxNet as an example. A MaxNet will then generate a data flow graph based on the program. In the data flow graph, a rectangle represents the input data or a parameter tensor. A rounded rectangle represents an operator, which the output is also a tensor. We also need to understand the characteristic of tensors which occupy the GPU memory. In a DNN model, there are two major memory use cases. The first use case is model parameters. In this figure, the green rectangle are the parameters. These tensors are not created by any operator, and their values are only changed in the gradient update stage, which is the last step of a training iteration. As the model parameters are not created by any operators, we assume they are in the CPU memory in the beginning of each iteration. And they are required to be swapped into GPU memory before it can be used by, other, by the operator. However, their memory can be immediately reused unless their values are changed in the gradient update stage. The second use case is the intermediate result, such as activation tensor, gradient tensor, and error tensors. The yellow rectangle in this therefore graph are the activation tensors. They are created by some operators. In our example, the operators include convolution, concatenation, and data. For the intermediate result, when they are created, we only need to make sure that there is enough memory to store the value. But they are required to be swapped to CPU memory before their occupied GPU memory can be reused by other tensors. The major goal of Swap Advisor is to support various types of deeper and wider DNN models. Here, Deeper means having more layers, and wider means having more parameters in a layer. Of course, it's not very useful if the swapping occurs a significant overhead compared to the computation. As a result, swap advisor also needs to minimize the overhead occurred by the swapping. Some existing work have proposed several optimizations to swapping tensors for DNN models. However, this optimization generally are generally based on some assumption of the models. For example, two existing work have optimized the swapping for deeper convolutional neural network. 
let both swap only the activation or the output tensor for the operator. Unfortunately, this assumption makes the system useless for wider network and other type of network such as RNN. This existing work do not meet our goals. So the optimization factor used by swap advisor must be applicable to different type of large models. In order to understand what are the general factors that affect the swapping overhead, we need to define what is a good swapping strategy. A swapping strategy which swaps a lot of tensors is not necessarily bad, as long as the swapping communication can be overlapped with the computation. The swapping strategy can still occur the minimum overhead. Thus, a good swapping strategy should overlap the operator computation with the swapping communication as much as possible to reduce the execution time. The key observation for swap advisor is that both operator scheduling and the memory allocation affect how swapping communication can be overlapped. We use an example to illustrate this key observation. This death flow graph shows a part of the forward propagation of a towing network. We assume there is only 10 megabyte memory and we use memory pool allocation. All of the tensors in this death flow graph, including the parameter tensor and the activating activation tensors, are 1 megabyte, except for A2 and A5, which are 2 megabyte. For simplicity, we assume that the computation is as fast as transmitting one megabyte data. In this example, the memory pool allocates five two megabyte memory object. All of these assumptions are mainly used to demonstrate our example. We first check the case which is schedule which is schedule the left branch first, which is to execute the convolution one, then two, three, and four. The orange operator represents the operator which is currently being executed, and the orange tensors means that it is created by that executing operator. At the T1, only the data or the input operator can be run, and it requires one, mem one memory object to store A0. Also, in order to overlap the communication, we prefetch the W1 tensor from CPU memory as it will be used by convolution 1 next. We discuss in the background a parameter tensor has to be swapped from the CPU memory to GPU memory before it can be used. The blue arrow here is a swapping operator. At the T2, we are going to execute convolution 1. So we use the third memory object for A1 and the fourth memory object for prefetching W2. At the T3, we need one memory object for A2 and one for prefetching W3. We now use six memory object. But as we discussed before, the memory space of a parameter tensor can be directed and reused by other tensors as long as its value is not changed. So we deallocate W1 and use its space for A2. And at the same time, as we are not going to use A1 for a while, we decided to swap out A1. Since it takes one unit of time to transmit A1 to CPU memory, it still occupies the memory. The green arrow here represents the swap out operator. At T4, A1 is already swapped out and W2 can be deallocated. We still have enough memory. We can use a similar strategy to run T5 and T6. Now we finish all the execution, it takes six units of time. Although we have done some swap, all the swap are overlap with the computation, so no extra overhead occur. Why if we try a different schedule? What if we schedule a right branch first? People can check the execution by themselves. Here we directly show the execution result. With the same assumption and the memory allocation, when we schedule a right branch first, 
no matter what kind of swapping strategy we choose, there will always be at least one swap operator that cannot be overlapped. As a result, it takes at least seven units of time to execute the Delphi graph due to the non-overlap swap operator. What if we use a different memory allocation? What if we allocate only one 2 megabyte memory object and the A1 megabyte memory object? Surprisingly, scheduling the right branch first now achieves a better swapping performance, which is contrary to the previous examples. The main reason is that there is only one 2 megabyte memory object, and both A2 and A5 are 2 megabyte. So we need to reuse the 2 megabyte memory object. And the scheduling the right branch first can swap out A2 earlier, and therefore can overlap the swapping communication. This example shows that both scheduling and the memory allocation affect the swapping performance. Swap advisor utilized the previous observation to optimize the swapping. However, how do we find a good schedule and memory allocation? Swap advisor used generated algorithm to search a good operator schedule and the memory allocation, which minimizes the swapping overhead. And the swap advisor created three GPU stream, one for the computation and the other two for swapping in and swap out. This allows swap advisor to overlap the swapping communication with the computation. This figure shows, shows the overview of swap advisor. Swap advisor takes the data flow graph and the memory usage from a deep learning framework as the input. It first randomly generates a bunch of schedule and the memory allocation based on the input. We call this individuals or a population of candidate solutions. The results are fitted into the swap planner to derive the swapping strategy for each pair of schedule and memory allocation. We evaluate the performance of each pair with a simulator. The results are fitted into the genetic algorithm selection to decide which pairs are good to survive to the next round of search. Starting from the second round of search, we use crossover and mutation to create a new schedule and a memory allocation. Due to the time limit, we focus on how to generate a new schedule and the swap planner in the rest of the talk. The first one is operator scheduling. In our setting, an operator schedule of a diaphragm graph is actually the topological ordering of the diaphragm graph. As a result, it is nature to encode an operator schedule as a sequence. With the encoding, we can use crossover and mutation to generated algorithm operation to generate the new schedules. We discuss the crossover here. Crossover is the process to create a new stream by inheriting the feature from a pair of parents. To do crossover for two schedules, we first randomly generate a crossover point. In the example, the crossover point is two. To create a string one, we use the slides of schedule one, the first and the second elements as the first part of our string one. We then use schedule 2 to complete the off-string 1. We iterate the operator in schedule 2. If the operator is not in the off-string 1, we append the operator to the off-string 1. Finally, we can get a valid schedule with, uh, which has partial order information from both parents. The off-string 2 can be created with the same approach but with different parts from the parents. With the schedule and the memory location created by the genetic algorithm, the swap planner can decide which tensor to swap. The swap planner scans through the given schedule, and when there is no enough memory for creating a tensor, it has to pick an in-memory tensor to swap out. Which tensor should we choose? It is intuitive to pick the tensor that will be used in the furthest future. 
This gives us more time to swap, swap it back. In this example, we don't have enough memory space for A8. Which tensor should we choose? As A7 will not be used in the longest period, we should pick A7. This strategy is not always optimal for our setting. If we pick A7, we may lose the chance to overlap the swapping with the computation. As a result, we introduce a time window theta. The swap planner still use the same strategy, but choose, but choose from those tensor which their reason, most recent usage are outside of the time window theta. In this case, both A6 and A5 meet the requirement. So we choose A5 to be swapped out as A5 is going to be used in the furthest future. In the evaluation, we would like to see if swap advisor can actually train different huge DNA models and how swap advisor performs. We compare swap advisor to an on-demand swapping, which decides what tensor to swap based on an LRU algorithm. Finally, we would like to evaluate the search performance of the genetic algorithm. Our evaluation was run on a V100 GPU with 16 GB memory. The ideal is a synthetic baseline with infinite GPU memory. The y-axis of the figure is the training throughput, the higher is the better. We can see that the on-demand swap ping performed poorly for eight layers on them. The main reason is the scheduling. In an RNN model, a parameter tensor is shared by different time steps in a layer. Thus, if the scheduler continues to schedule operator from different layers, we need to make space for the parameter tensors. In our case, the parameter tensors are large. So the advisor search algorithm is able to find the pattern and generate a good schedule to achieve good performance. This figure shows the search result versus search iteration for A layers RNN. The y-axis is the running time per training iteration for RNN, and the x-axis is the genetic algorithm search iteration. We can see that in the beginning, before any search is performed, all the schedule and the memory allocation are generate, randomly generated, and the training, the running time is very bad more than 180 seconds. Within 10 iterations, the performance is quickly improved to less than 20 seconds per iteration. This demonstrates that genetic algorithms actually help swap the advisor to quickly find a good schedule and a memory allocation. The final evaluation is to train with large inception v4. We increase the parameter size by four times. Inception v4 has several branches in the data flow graph. More importantly, it has many different sizes of tensors. So the advisor is able to achieve almost perfect performance when batch size is 16 and 32, and it can achieve 70% of ideal performance for batch size 64. Some existing work have been proposed to support DNN swapping. The approach of the existing work is to analyze the data flow graph with specific type of large models to perform the optimization. For example, VDNN and TF4MS swap only activation tensors as they focus on deeper models, which activation tensors may dominate the memory usage. Another work, super neurons, combine the recomputation technique with swapping. However, it only swaps tensor related to convolutional operations. This assumption limited the use cases for the existing work. In conclusion, we presented a swap advisor. Swap advisor utilizes genetic algorithm to find the good operator schedule and the memory location for swapping. And the result show that it can achieve good performance for different types of wider and deeper network.